part of their so-called act was later filmed. It is the only existing record of Annie Sullivan's voice. When I saw Helen Keller first, she was six years and eight months old. She had been blind and deaf and mute since her 19th month as the result of an illness. She had no way of communicating with those around her except a few imitative signs that she had uh, made for herself. A push man to go and a pull man to come and so on. She had observed that we did not use the hands when we were talking to each other. And I let her see by putting her hand on my face how we talked with our mouths. She felt the vibration of the spoken word. Instantly she spelled I want to talk with my mouth. That seemed impossible. But after experimenting for a time, we found that placing her hand in this position, the thumb resting on the throat, right at the larynx, the first finger on the lips, the second on the nose, we found that she could feel the vibration of spoken words. For instance, the throat, she feels the G, the hard G, G. <laughs> and on the lips, she feels is the, uh, and the K sound, <laughs> On the lips, she feels the uh, B, <laughs> and the and the, with the second finger on the nose, the nasal sounds, the mm, mm. the mm. Mm. The first word she learned to articulate was the little word, it. With the hand in this position, I made the vowel, i. Mm. She felt it, i. Mm. Then I made the T. She feels it with the finger on her lips, on my lips. Then I put the two letters together to form the word. It, and the first word was learned. After her seventh lesson, she was able to speak the sentence word by word. I am not. Dumb, dumb now. No. Calling attention to the needs of the blind and the deaf by her public appearances, Helen worked endlessly to gain for them more enlightened treatment, more schools, more homes. Above all, to make people understand that the greatest service to the blind is the prevention of blindness. In a day when venereal disease was not a topic for discussion among women, Helen spoke out. She was recognized not just as a wonder, but as a wonder worker. The great men and women of her time wished to meet and know her. She made Coolidge smile. President Hoover received her and her fellow members of the First World Conference for the Blind. Franklin D. Roosevelt defended her in her efforts for the handicapped. Like all the great, she was asked to launch a ship. Like all the great, she was made an Indian. Writers wondered at her. Artists sculpted her. Poets drew inspiration from her. To the world, the miracle was Helen Keller. To Helen, the miracle was Annie Sullivan. Then in 1936, Helen's teacher, companion, and beloved friend for nearly 50 years, 
Annie Sullivan died. Polly Thompson, warm, devoted, well-trained for this unique job, was there to take Annie's place at Helen's side. From that day, she has never left. Together they follow Annie's star, from continent to continent, they to Britain, Italy, Greece, New Zealand, perpetual beggars, they call themselves, in the cause of the handicapped. The newsreels of the world have come to know Helen. Helen Keller, one of the world's truly great women, arrives at Kingsford Smith Airport, Sydney, to begin an Australian-wide lecture tour. Out of her own darkness, she has brought light and hope and courage to tens of thousands of afflicted people. Stricken blind and deaf at two years of age, Miss Keller consequently could never learn to speak normally. When she addresses the young students at Sydney's Deaf and Dumb Institute, her artificially acquired monotone is interpreted by Miss Thompson for those children with partial or aided hearing. Every step I'm going to prove it through, I'll tell you very I know every step of the road you are taking. And I don't need so is it. I'll prove it and it just turns in the eyes. And I rejoice at your cheer and determination. Oh, the obstacles you meet are many. Because the obstacles you meet are and, many. And who live into the art? With life, and, 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 and when you go out to life's struggles and adventures, you, you will raise a banner. You will raise a banner who follow you. For the deaf who follow you. As guest of the government of Israel, the famous Helen Keller, blind, deaf, and dumb from babyhood, visits a village set apart for the blind. Miss Keller's visit marks a new era for the village. When she explains that segregation is bad for the blind, authorities act promptly. Seeing inhabitants are now being encouraged to settle there with the blind. The name of the village has been changed from Har Ivrim, meaning village of the blind, to Or Adonai, meaning light of God. For the first time since before the war, Helen Keller pays a visit to the people of Japan, this time as a guest of the United States government. In Tokyo and other cities, the entire population turns out to cheer this great American, left blind and deaf by an affliction. To the Japanese people, Miss Keller's life is an inspiring example of what hope and determination can do, for she has conquered inconceivable darkness and isolation to become a world figure. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were still recovering from the atomic bomb when Helen Keller went there on pilgrimage. In a lake of shrines, the Japanese created an everlasting shrine to the memory of the great teacher, Anne Sullivan. Helen lighted the first candle. The people of Japan will see that the light never goes out. <laughs> 